Hello there. I've got my coffee, and I've got this stuff. What is this stuff? It's ultralight gear. I need a workbench. This should work. All right, that is way better. Now that we've got our workbench, I can kind of explain what I'm talking about today. Now, as you can see behind me, there's a sewing machine set up. Um, no, we're not going to be sewing today. Actually, we're talking about ultralight fishing. This is the current box that I keep a lot of my ultralight gear in. I've also got other, you know, multi-species gear in here, like spoons and whatnot. I'm actually going to go ahead and transfer this over to a system that I think is going to be better than this. And what is that? Well, I just picked up some stuff, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we're making some improvements here. I went to Academy and found this little tackle bag for $13. I'm not going to complain about that. The reason that I wanted this is because I feel like it's going to be a very, very easy way to stay organized with all of my ultralight gear. It's got a couple boxes that it came with, like so. And then I bought this puppy as well, which is just like a Plano um, waterproof box. So in today's video, I'm really just going to fill up this bag with some of what I would consider essentials for multi-species, mostly ultralight fishing. I don't have everything that I'd like yet. I know a lot of you have had some great suggestions, such as trout magnet jigs, flu-flus jigs, or something weird. I'm going to take a look and try to find some more of that stuff, but for now, I want to transfer all of this in here. And then after this, I actually might go fishing, despite the fact that there's probably a pretty small chance of actually catching a fish. I'm in Kansas right now. Anyways, let's get started. I picked up a couple things at both Cabela's and Academy, and it's mostly just plastics and some other jigs. So between all the stuff that I just picked up here recently and all of the stuff that I already had, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in my tackle boxes so that way we have like a good organized system. I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If you're organized on the water, you're spending less time worrying about where your stuff is and more time catching fish. So that's exactly what today's video is all about. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is actually put all of my jigs in this Plano waterproof system. That way I can keep them super organized while also protecting them from rust. Um, these are probably the most valuable parts of the whole ultralight kit. So I feel like this is probably the best place to put them. So as I've talked about in the past, these Eagle Claw ball head jigs tend to be some of my favorites. Uh, they're just really coming lightweight and they have a really, really small hook. So that way you get a lot of good hook penetration when you're catching small bluegill, perch, the list goes on. What I'm going to do is actually put the lightest jig heads at the very front and then make my way to the heaviest jig heads. So I went ahead and picked up some of these nail head jigs and these are really tube insert jigs and I think these will be great for some of the small hollow body tubes that a lot of people actually use for crappie. I'll probably use them for multiple sunfish species. Um, definitely crappie, probably some perch. Either way, these look like these are going to be some really good jig heads as well. I'll just put those right there. Money. The next jig that I'm actually super, super excited about is also like a nail head jig, but this one's weedless. So let me take one out real quick for you. As you can see, it's got a little brush guard. So 90% of the time, I'm gonna be using some of the jigs that I just loaded into this box. These are really the bread and butter for me. They've got the smallest hooks, and they've got really, really light weights, and I just have a ton of confidence in them. But besides these, I'm also gonna put some of these other ball head jigs in there, which are a little bit bigger, and actually might work a little bit better for some of the small bass, some of the bigger bluegill, and some of the other bigger sunfish species. Okay, so I've got pretty much all of my jigs loaded into this box. The front row, I'm going to go ahead and put more of my skirted crappie jigs. What I mean by that is this. Something like this little marabou type jig where it's got a little bit of hair on it. Or maybe something like this with a little bit more of a flash skirt on there. All right, you know, I didn't get all of my jigs in there, but I can always put those in the side pockets. That's what's great about this bag is it gives me lots of different areas where I can store gear while keeping it really, really small so I don't carry just 50 pounds of tackle. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, next box. What are we going to put in this puppy? Well, I'm kind of thinking this is going to be more of our terminal tackle for bait fishing. So using bobbers, hooks, weights, etc. What I went ahead and picked up is actually a few things. I got some slip bobbers as well as some of these bobber stops. Slip bobbers and bobber stops allow you to set the bait to go down to a deeper depth so that way you could still you know, cast it out there and have your bobber go up to like 15 feet if you really wanted it to be that way. So I think I'm going to use these a good amount. In fact, I might actually use these with an artificial during the colder weather seasons. 
classic split shot weights, always got to have these around. And of course, you got to have some hooks. I think I actually left a lot of my good ultralight hooks back at my apartment in Michigan, so I'll load those in later on down the road. Let's move on to the next box. What am I going to put in there? In the third and final box, I'm actually going to load this puppy up with spoons and spinners. Uh, you know, I'll put other baits in here as well. Probably get some small crank baits, probably get some small jerk baits, that sort of thing. These are really going to be any hard baits. Now you're going to see that some of the spoons that I load into this box are much, much bigger than I would ever throw in my ultralight. Um, but that's really because this is kind of a multi-species box that 90% is ultralight. But I'm going to go ahead and load in some spoons that I might use for white bass or walleye or that sort of thing as well. The first baits that I actually have are these crappie spoons that my boss gave me. I used to make these for him and these things are absolutely killer. I think they're not only going to work for crappie, but they're probably going to work pretty well for perch and other species. And I could probably actually throw these under the ice and probably have luck that way as well. These next spoons are really my old white bass spoons and these things are killer. I'll probably use them again someday. Actually, I could even use these for bass. They'll catch normal bass as well. Um, they're just really, really heavy lead and then they're painted with a flash and these things kick butt. So that's all I'm adding to this box for now. Like I mentioned, I've got some other stuff I'll probably throw in later. So let's go ahead and load these boxes into the bag, but then after that, I've still got all of these plastics that I gotta put in there as well. And I'm just gonna put those in the side pockets. By golly, now that we got this bag all rigged up, it would be stupid not to go fishing. Let's go. But first, let me finish this coffee. Green day, bro. Okay, so if you watched my recent video where I fished in Kansas, you know that I caught a lot of fish here. And that's why I'm back. I have no idea if the fishing's gonna be any good because it is so dead of winter, but it's worth a shot. Also, I'm gonna substitute this hat for this new hat that my brother and sister-in-law gave me for Christmas. How cool is that? Out with the old and in with the new. How cool do I look? Also, I forgot I had this, but this is an old ultralight that I used to use back in high school, and here it is at my parents' house. We're gonna dust it off a little bit and see if we can catch a fish on it. Hmm, what should I rig up on this thing? Let's take a look in the new bag. So I have no idea if these fish are still gonna be here, but it's worth a try. Seems like the water's a little shallower here than it was last time. I'm gonna try back there and then we're gonna go back to the pond if this place doesn't pan out. I'm not thinking so. I think if the water was higher, there would still be a chance, but because the water's low and it's cold, it's kind of a bad combination. I think we're gonna be better off going back to the pond. It'd be one thing if I was seeing fish swim around, but I don't even see any minnows or anything. Man, this thing is crispy. So what happens when you leave a reel in a garage for years on end? It gets a little crusty and dusty. I think my dog's getting a little antsy. That probably means it's time to go home. This is why I hardly ever bring her fishing, because this is the kind of stuff that distracts me. And then I never catch any fish. What are you doing? <laughs> Karma. <laughs> Oh 
okay, we only fished for maybe 30, 40 minutes and we didn't catch anything, but that's okay. The moral of the story is that this tackle bag is gonna work very well for my ultralight fishing needs. I do have one question for you before you go though. Out of everything that I put in there, what am I missing? What baits would you recommend for multi-species ultralight action? I know some of you have mentioned trout magnet jigs, and I'm on the lookout for those, but what else? What else could I put in this bag to catch mondo or, or micro fish? I want to know. Drop a comment below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you later.